what's up with the Ultra 280? Okay, 280 means 280 liters. So it's 500 times 700 times 800. You got four extrusion units on it. Four separate That's very units. cool. Yeah, yeah. You can do four different materials. You could do relay or backup systems. You can do support material, mm. different nozzle sizes, different layer heights, whatever you want. Mm. If one of the extrusion units has a problem, you can just take it out, maintain it outside, and right. then deactivate it, put it back in, mm. and work with it again. That's awesome. So we're really flexible. Hey everybody, this is Dan from Slice Engineering. I'm here with Max from... Hi guys. Hagia 3D slash Big Rep. Yes. And we're gonna be talking about their new machine and what they're doing at the show. So Max, tell me a little bit about Hagia 3D and, and how you guys are working with Big Rep now. We started 2014 playing around with 3D printers and um, got it to a serious part in 2019, I guess. And then we started to build small machines and bigger machines and even bigger machines. and. Then we did five axis five machines, axis machines yeah. yes, pallet extrusion systems. We yeah. pretty much tested out everything. And um, yeah, now we got to a certain level where we can really say we managed to have a really nice portfolio here. So Haga 3D brought us to a point where we really can say we want to compete with the world. We want to compete with other people, with other companies. And Because you guys were really just in the DAC, the DAC, the German-speaking region, yeah, right? Yeah. With Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Exactly. So yeah. mainly Austria, Germany, some in Switzerland, some in China, but... You know, it's always hard to get overseas service, everything support. Right. So we focused on these two countries mm -hmm. mainly. Yes, yes. Okay, cool. And so now you guys are expanding internationally by partnering with BigRep. Is that, that correct? Exactly. So just a couple of months back, we decided to go with BigRep to use uh, the resale network to use the whole support structure they have. We wanted to go to the state with our printers. Right. And to build that everything up ourselves is quite a lot of hassle. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a huge... We're really burn. glad to partner up with BigRap. They have a lot of great printers as well, big size printers. We are building big size printers. And so we've merged our portfolio. So low temp, mid temp to high temp. It really fits really nice together. Yeah. And that's been really a focus for you guys is the high temp, high performance materials, right? Mostly for like automotive and aerospace applications. Exactly. Is that correct? Exactly. So it's a lot of end use parts and functional prototypes. Mm -hmm. Basically everything starting from ABS up, high temp materials and pack old term as well. It really depends what you want to do, but um, because we heat up the chamber to 180C, also it's, it's quite bad. Quite toasty. Yeah it's, yeah, it's getting warm, yeah. but only on the inside, obviously. <laughs> right, right. The thing is, we have a really nice thermal management. Okay. Um, a lot of heating power, a lot of fan power. We try to get it nice and warm, especially in the process zone up there where the magic happens. Right. We really want to have nice layer adhesion. And this is also a really important thing. This is why we started to use your hot ends as well. All right, awesome. So yeah, tell me about the, the new machine. What's what's up with the Ultra 280? Okay, 280 means 280 liters. So it's 500 times 700 times 800. Uh, we got four extrusion units on it. Four separate That's very units. cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, can do four different materials. You could do relay or backup systems. You mm -hmm. can do support material, mm -hmm. different nozzle sizes, different layer heights, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. If one of the extrusion units has a problem, you can just take it out, maintain it outside, and right. then deactivate it, put it back in, mm -hmm. and work with it again. That's awesome. So we're really flexible. Yeah. It's all on one printhead, so it's not it's not, not an independent. independent system, yeah. But um, this is exactly what we need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So what are some of the applications where your customers are using this machine with the the four different heads? Yeah. So four different nozzles is mainly made for not just one material, but two or three materials. So mm -hmm. hard soft combination. You okay. can go down to 60A for soft materials. With like TPU type materials. Yeah. 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 We can also do the, all the high temp stuff. Mm -hmm. And especially if you talk small spools. Mm -hmm. So high temp materials tend to come in small spools because right. the drying is quite different. Yeah. So you really want to have a way to back up the system. So mm -hmm. once you have a big part, you need more material, right. more spools. Yeah. You don't want to do this manually. So right. automatic backup systems, so you just throw in multiple spools and then back and it runs. Yeah. That's very cool. I know, you know, running out of film and mid-print can sometimes cause all sorts of errors. And even with the best calibration, once things start yeah. to cool, you know, it just really just doesn't work very well. So 
having a redundant backup system with, with additional filament being automatically fed in is yeah. quite amazing, actually. Yeah. It's great, so great setup. It's also that we, we separated the hot area to the cold area, so even if, for some reason, you had opened the, the hatch, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be a problem because the hot air stays inside mm -hmm. That's and very it does cool. not cool down. Right. Wow, awesome. Yeah, it's like a, like a big industrial oven that you're printing in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> say Fantastic. That. Why did you start working with Slice? Tell me about that. Well, at first, when we started, we were developing our own hot ends, you know, trying around, trying different sizes, aluminum, steel, different materials, stuff like that, different heating cartridges, sensors, and great. Right. At some point, we realized hot end is not just like any part on the printer. It's right. not just something you just throw on and need. Yeah. It's like one of the hard pieces. We're spending so much time developing the printer, so we have less time developing the hot end. Right. So we thought, why like reinventing everything yeah. ourselves when sure. there is great options on the market? Right. So we're looking around and this is when we found you, I think, four years ago. Yeah, so in 2020. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, an odd year for the market, you know, 2020, but it ended up being working out really well for our partnership. Yeah, I think for us, it was, uh, we had a lot of time testing. Mm -hmm. And so we tested on multiple machines and right. different types of hot ends. We tested the air-cooled hot ends, liquid-cooled hot ends, everything. Our system is mainly water-cooled now because mm -hmm. the high temp. If we want to change the hot end, because we can use multiple hot ends, mm -hmm. like the pr precise hot end or right. the Magnum or the Magnum Plastic. Sure. We don't want to unplug any hoses or anything. Sure. This is why we're using the Connect versions. Right. Which are really great for us. Because yeah. you just, the whole printer is cooled anyways. Yeah. So why don't just use this cooled surface right. to cool the hot end as well, that yeah. cold end, the hot end. Right. right, absolutely. Yeah, and that works really well with the separation you mentioned earlier from the heated chamber to just even opening the lid. You can actually work in there without burning yourself at 180 degrees. Exactly, Celsius. exactly. Yeah. What are some, uh, specific applications that you can talk about where customers have had success with printing multiple materials, maybe like a, like an overmold or something like that? Hard soft combinations are like a good, good thing, like mm -hmm. having a, like a hard part which you coat with something soft to put something in, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. Or if you want to have something that keeps away liquid or air, you can print like um, ceilings and stuff like okay. this, yeah. which really works well, nice. especially TPU because it sticks on pretty much everything. Right. You don't have to glue it in, you just print it right on. Yeah. That's, really, That's cool. really nice. And also, especially if you work with high temp materials or materials that has a really good layer bond, you don't want to use the same material as a support. Sure. Because then you need a lot of tooling yeah. and whatever to a lot get of it off. Processing. Exactly. Yeah. So you want to use something that you can just throw into the, the water or any any other liquid soluble. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And this is why we need at least two materials. Mm -hmm. And the third third extruder for, yeah. for the backup system, obviously. Okay, sure. And the fourth always for, you know. Whatever else it goes to your mind. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> For flexibility. Exactly. Yeah. So can you give an example of like a customer printing? I mean, when do they use a uh, hard material with a soft material for? Like, is there maybe a part that's being deployed in a factory that you could talk about? I think we recently had something for a car. I'm not much a car guy, sure. but they said it's something for the air, you know, like it's an air inlet, which right. needs to be flexible because you have to push it on somewhat, mm. but then it has a, a stiff part in between right. to fix it somewhere and to, to make sure it doesn't move. Sure. And then another flexible part as well mm -hmm. to fit it on another pipe or something. Right. Yeah. And stuff like that. Yeah, I've definitely seen applications before where you've got a, like an air intake for a car engine Typically, it's a, a softer part that is fitted onto exactly. and long to that's hard. And typically, those are made of metal and then paired to like a rubber uh, system. But if you can print the whole thing in one shot, I mean, that's incredible. That's really nice. Especially yeah. for prototyping. Yeah, because the, the layer adhesion between these materials is so good that you don't have to use glue or anything. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Wow. Yeah. All right, so Max, talk to me about kind of the specs, features of the machine, benefits of the machine. Why this particular machine? Why should customers buy this? All right, the Ultra 280 has a 280 liters build volume, yeah. which means 500 times 700 times 800 millimeters. It's pretty big. Yeah it's, yeah, it's pretty big. We can heat up the chamber, as I said before, to 180C, same with the print bed. And our fans for the heating are really, really strong. Mm -hmm. So we upgraded them just before we sent the first unit to the US because we wanted the circulation. Yeah. Exactly. We don't want to have a flow just from one side. We right. have a flow from both sides. So we have four outlets at the top and four outlets at the bottom. Wow. So we warm up the air at the bottom, which we don't use because we're not printing here. Sure. And then we suck it back in and we throw it out and the top even hotter. Wow. To make it really 
great for the area where we're printing. I imagine you sort of mapped that out, right? Exactly. So to we did figure out the simulation yeah. and, and check if it really worked for us. Yeah. We also managed to put the print bed a little bit further away from the glass. Mm. So you're not losing. Exactly. We don't want to lose heat to the glass. And right. also we have an, a really nice uh, area because if you build up a big part and you throw in air from the sides, obviously you won't reach the inside of the parts. Right. So what we want to do is we want to have the airflow coming to the front and go all the way up like this yeah, and, and mix it around. Well. Yeah. Exactly. So we want to try to keep the print bad and not just print bad, the whole print, the part on the print bed. Uniform. Awesome. Yeah. 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 I see you've got, it uh, looks like double pane glass here with the vacuum. Exactly. Between, so yeah. even if you heat up to 180C, if you touch the glass, it's pretty cool. So you don't feel anything. Maybe um, a few degrees above room temperature. Exactly. Yeah. So it will get a little bit warm on the outside eventually, but with roughly 90 degrees in the chamber, you cannot feel anything. Right. That's amazing. So, you know, we're from Austria. I mean, we're originally, so now with Big Red, we, with Austria and Germany, so right. in America as well, safety is a big thing for us. So of we didn't just have an emergency stop. We always try to have like safety door switches. So if you open the door, um, everything switches down, mm. everything switches off, all the heaters uh, lose power. Mm. But we also make sure that we don't destroy our equipment. You know, if someone opens the door while printing, well, it's not possible, you cannot do this now, it's locked, but you can unlock the printer if you want. Mm. If you really want to stop it, you can unlock it and open the door, but then everything is switched off. Right. But in a way where we don't destroy our motors and we don't right. destroy our heaters and yeah. everything. So safe discharge of the, exactly. of the energy that's in the machine. It's, yeah. it's important that the user is safe, but right. it's also important that the machine is safe. Right. And best case scenario, even the print is safe. Right, exactly. yeah, absolutely. That's great. I think something that's heavily overlooked by a lot of machine builders is that, you know, <laughs> making sure that not only the person is safe operating, but the machine is also safe. And, and the fact that there's even an emergency stop button that uh, sometimes there's a big delay on some machines when you use the e-stop, and, and that's that's a problem. You want the e-stop supposed to be immediate. Right? Yeah, that's a yeah. basic feature, I guess. Right, so you just yeah. hit it and everything stops, and yeah, that's it. You're right. Walk us through kind of the workflow on what does it look like to set up a print. I know there's one running right now, so we can't exactly. disturb we it. We kind of go but... through the whole HMI, yeah. um, but the thing is, what we're trying to do with the HMI, we're trying to keep it as simple as possible. So we don't want a fancy HMI with like animations and stuff because that takes a lot of time, right. a lot of resources. It's distracting for the user as well. Well, yeah, some people say like this, some people right. say like this, but you know, at the end, you don't want to sit here and watch like fancy animations. You want right. to start a print yeah. and you want to have a great part. Yeah. So. Spending all the resources on an HMI for us was not the right fit. So we decided keep it simple. Yeah. Everyone needs to be able to print, even our CEO. Right. So this is one of the test persons we have. So yeah. if Thomas, our, our CEO from Hybrid3D, right. um, can still print, then we know we did everything That's right. good. Yeah. <laughs> Love you, Thomas, but you're the dummy switch. That's great. <laughs> I think I'm probably the dummy switch of my company too. So no, it's good, good to have yeah, someone like good. that. Yeah. <laughs> it's really important. <laughs> yeah, cool. So if you look at it, we have sensor check like in the monitor screen. We, right. we try to monitor every sensor and trying to keep the temperature even as possible. We have six temperature sensors in the whole building area, which uh, vary just around one or two degrees. Yeah, C's that's or, amazing, especially with such a large, I mean, 280 liters, and you're only getting a few degrees of variation. We are, moving, we are moving a lot of air here. Right. So it can be used as, as a part cooling system as well if you want it to, but mm -hmm. you know, as we're drinking, printing high temp mainly, that's mainly just to keep the part warm. Sure. Yeah, also eliminate that warping issue that can exactly. be a huge problem. We also have like a Tico View, it is a standard. Mm -hmm. We have like this override feature where you can basically override everything you want while mm -hmm. printing different C height, different speed, different flow rate, mm. if you want to do it. Right. Like, you don't yeah. have to because you normally if you slice something, you can basically throw it in and press start and it would, would work. Are you guys using your own slicer or how, do, how what's the slicing protocol? Uh, we used to have Simplify 3D mm -hmm. and we're still using it because it has a lot of great features. Sure. It's kind of fallen back a little bit in the last couple of years, yeah. but for like building machines and really testing it it's great because yeah. there's nothing in between like actually doing something in the software and your g code, code output yeah so you know what you have at the end of the time now obviously with big grab we're using blade sure they're using blade right. and it gives us the opportunity to use a lot of different profiles for our materials different hot ends right between nice so because we can have the precise and magnum and the magnum plus hot end right this machine you can select it on the profile and it will automatically tell you Populate maximum settings. output yeah. settings and stuff like this. That's very cool. Okay, so talk to me about the filament system. You mentioned there's, you can handle four spools at a time, yeah. obviously four hot ends as well. 
So how does this all work? So what we're trying to do is give the customer the opportunity to put spools any size in it. You know, like okay. starting from yeah. really small spools, one kilogram, up right. to two, three kilograms, five kilograms, even eight kilograms of spools. Wow. That's and cool. You've got that there right now with a tiny one and a big one. That's exactly, really cool. exactly. So what we want to have is like we have the, the filament empty um, sensors which okay. detect if the filament runs out. Sure. Obviously you need that if you want to print back up, of course. And what you can also see here is we have fittings here to, to connect our dry con unit because mm. especially high temp materials need to be dried. Right. Everything that is highly hygroscopic, like nylon, right. um, for example, needs to be dried. Of course. And therefore we developed our dry con unit mm. um, which you can just put over here, then connect the filament tube, and then you're good to go. Wow, that's awesome. It's amazing the difference that you'll see in part quality and mechanical properties. Definitely. Printing with a dry material. You definitely, definitely fully dry print wet, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. There are some materials that are not that, they're a little bit wet, that doesn't really matter. Right. They don't take that much water in, mm -hmm. like polycarbonate, for example. Yeah. But if you're using nylon, as I said, or any high temperature or support material, like right. water-soluble material. Sure, yeah, they start to says, dissolve. Well, it's just yeah. like, <laughs> sucking in water as much yeah. as you can. So you really need to get your homework done and make them dry before yeah. you start printing. We're based in Florida, which is very humid, yeah. known to be very humid. And when we first started the company, we found that a lot of people were having issues. They were complaining about the hot end, saying, oh, you know, it's causing all these problems. We realized it was all related to wet filament. Yeah. And so we actually launched a desiccant product uh, as a result because we needed something to use in our labs yeah. and then also you know, provide to our customers that uh, allows for better storage solutions exactly. at home exactly. so it's not getting wet. You know, yeah. Filament storage and drying is a huge thing. It is. I think it's highly underrated. Yeah. So, well, high temp, everyone's doing it, sure. but a lot of printers have this like keep dry boxes inside of the printer, which right. is good, I guess, but you know, it doesn't actively dry your filament. Sure. We don't have that either, mm -hmm. but this is why we have the external unit. Sure. Because Putting an active drying cabinet in your printer costs a lot of money and sure. some people already have something to dry their stuff so we decided not to do this yeah. to keep the price on our printer slow mm -hmm. and if you want to dry your filaments with our machines, right. well, just get the dry cone. Yeah, that's a great solution. Awesome. Thanks for walking us through this. It, it's really cool, honestly, to see a huge AKG spool next to, what is that, maybe a half? 250. Yeah, 250. Yeah even smaller and running perfectly fine right next to each other on the same on the same platform yeah very cool all right max thank you for giving us a tour of of the booth You're welcome. and the machine super excited to see the ultra 280 here on display uh where can people find out more information if they're watching online and not able to come to the show in person bigcraft.com is a really nice address i guess sure. yeah so and if you know anyone from bigcraft then I'm pretty sure a lot of people know about bigcraft anyway so right. it's easy to get in contact with us and yeah, we'll be at any great show, I think, in the next years. So right. probably yeah. the, the next great show will be in, in Frankfurt again. The Form Next. next. Yeah. yeah, wonderful. Definitely. That's a great show if you guys haven't made, been out to Form Next before. Super cool to see Mesa Frankfurt, the huge hall that they have there yeah, is, is really amazing. Really huge. Uh, yeah. Huge hall and lots of cool technology that not all of it comes over to the U.S. You know, we don't always yeah, see exactly. everything that's going on in Europe at the shows here like at Rapid. It's my first time at Rapid, so okay. seeing yeah. the difference between the, the German um, show and right. here in, in, in the States. Yeah, it's significant. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of different companies I wasn't aware of, and mm -hmm. so it's, it's nice to see the whole right. family the whole industry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then you guys have resellers in the U.S., of course. And, exactly. Uh, yeah. and People can also purchase directly from Big Rep. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So it's one of the good things with Big Rep. It just works, you know. Mm -hmm. People trust them, or, right? And we yeah. we trust them as well. So right. yeah, yeah, that's great. It's good to have a good reseller network. Exactly. To support exactly. customers in every application and in every part of the country. Exactly. Awesome. Thank you, Max. You're welcome. Absolute pleasure. I hope I see you around. Yeah.